Good morning, virtual learners of Valenzuela City. Today is another learning engagement. I had so much fun the last time I saw you. Can I receive a happy emoji if you can still remember me? It's great to see you again. I am glad that you are always ready to take challenges even during this pandemic. Because as we say, hashtag learning never stops. I'm sure that you can do it. Join me again as we discover the rules in transforming the voices of the verb. Yes, you heard it right. I understand that the voice of the verb may be one of the difficult features of the English grammar. It is expected that you have watched the previous live video of lesson four, which we will con connect to this particular lesson. But this time, we shall focus on transforming sentences from passive to active voice. For our discussion today, we shall focus on this competency for grade 7 English, and that is to use the passive and active voice meaningfully in varied contexts. These are our learning targets for today. One, identify active and passive voice. Two, discuss rules and tenses when transforming the voice of the verb. And lastly, rewrite sentences from passive to active voice. As we begin our discussion today, I would like you to watch this report on the latest news here in our city. It's important to keep ourselves updated with what is happening around us. After the news report, we will have a very simple task, so please watch this. From the smallest stories to the biggest controversy, your leading provider of truth in the spirit of responsible journalism, we provide you news with no bias, only here at Valenzuela Patrol 24-7. For the headlines, Dr. Pio Valenzuela scholars receive financial aid. NGCP inaugurates third relocation site in Valenzuela. Valenzuela City to restrict video sessions. The details of our top stories coming up next. Dr. Pio Valenzuela scholars receive financial assistance. 653 scholars from a total of 750 Dr. Pio Valenzuela scholarship program receive financial assistance from the city government of Valenzuela. Each student scholar will receive 7,500 pesos, which is half of what they receive every semester. They are a part of the new batch of Dr. Pio Valenzuela scholars who passed the qualifying exams. This is part of the 360-degree program of our local government. With the scholarship grantee being the best and the brightest among all examinees, Mayor Rex expressed his appreciation to the student and hope that the opportunity will be well taken care of. The local government is also giving half full pledge of assistance by supporting a student's holistic learning despite the COVID-19 pandemic. On top of the scholarship grants, Valenzuela City also provides free data subscription of around 8,000 students from PLB, Valenzuela City Polytechnic College, and Valenzuela School of Mathematics and Science for online learning. Valenzuela City also uses a world-class learning management system, Canvas, which is also free of charge for the students' use. NGCP inaugurates third relocation site in Valenzuela. Disciplina Village, Lingunan was officially inaugurated as the third in-city relocation site in Valenzuela City. It was considered as one of the biggest programs through the help of the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines or NGCP. This project aims to relocate citizens who are living within the danger zone areas. 
the National Grid Corporation, together with Gawad Kalinga, formally turned over to the local government of Valenzuela the first batch of low-rise dwellings in Disciplina Village, Lingunan, Valenzuela. The project, a joint in city housing for informal settler families, was built to relocate families living within the transmission right-of-way corridor to prevent accidents from happening due to their proximity to the high-voltage power lines. 750 families living under transmission lines will be transferred once the construction is done by next year. The unit is safer with electricity and water supply. A decent life is waiting for the relocated families. Valenzuela City to restrict video -okay sessions. Video -okay no more during class hours. Valenzuela is set to prevent the use of video -okay and other devices producing distracting noises that can interfere with online class hours. The Council amended the video -okay and other devices of similar nature regulatory ordinance in Valenzuela City. Through this, any noise created using stereo, karaoke, video -okay, cassette, radio player, and other similar apparatus are prohibited from Monday to Friday, 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. of the next day. This is also not allowed during class hours from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. from Monday to Friday in all residential and socialized area in the city. And that's the latest in Valenzuela City. This is your news anchor. Did you find the reports interesting? Well, that's one of the characteristics of a news article. It should interest your readers or your audience. This time, we will test if you can still recall our discussion last time. In lesson four of our learning packets, we discussed the different rules in transforming the voice of the verb. To test if you can still recall, let us have a fun activity, and we will call it as the voice. That's right. You will see sentences on your screen, and they are taken from the news reports that you have watched and listened to. All you need to do is to comment A if the sentence is active voice, and P for passive voice. If you are ready, click the heart emoji and you will be given five seconds to answer after I have read the sentence. This is the first sentence. The government provides assistance to deserving students. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. If your answer is A, you are correct. The scholarship grant was given by the city government. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. If your answer is P, you are correct. Valenzuela prioritized educating the youth. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. If your answer is A, you are correct. NGCP inaugurates third relocation site in Valenzuela. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. If your answer is A, you are correct. The project aims to relocate citizens who are living within the danger zone areas. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. If your answer is A, you are correct. A decent life is provided.
by the local government. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. If your answer is P, you are correct. The relocation site will be built for over 750 families. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. If your answer is P, you are correct. Video key sessions during class hours were prohibited in the city. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. If your answer is P, you are correct. The ordinance was amended by the council. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. If your answer is P, you are correct. How many correct items did you get? Well, the easiest part of this topic is by simply identifying the voice. Remember, if the action is done by the subject, the voice is active. If the action is done by a receiver and not the subject, then the voice is passive. Always remember that. When we transform the voice of the verb from passive to active this time, we also follow the same procedure. Let's take the last sentence from our activity. The ordinance was amended by the council. First, we need to identify the verb. The verb in this example is was amended. Recalling the formula, this is under the simple past form of the verb. In this case, was amended will become amended. The verb in its simple past form. Who amended the ordinance? It is the council. So that will be your subject. What did the council amend? It's the ordinance. So that will be your object. Following the pattern, S-T-B-D-O, our sentence when transformed in active voice will be, the council amended the ordinance. Let us have more examples. With the verbs, or when the verbs contain be verbs, such as is, are, was, where, followed by the past participle form of the verb, the voice is considered passive. To make it active, just make the verb in simple present for is and are, in simple past for was and where. Examples. Assistance is provided to deserving students by the local government. To transform that to active, the sentence becomes, the local government provides assistance to deserving students. The verb now is in the simple present form. Look at this sentence. Educating the youth was prioritized by the mayor. To transform this to active, since it has the helping verb was, the verb should be in simple past form. The sentence now becomes, the mayor prioritized educating the youth. Are you up for a challenge? This time, let's try to transform this sentence from passive to active. He was granted a scholarship. 653 students were given financial help. You have one minute to think about your answer.
time is up. Here are the answers. For number one, the city grants him a scholarship. For number two, the mayor gave financial help to 653 students. What did you notice with the subjects? Since the performer or the actor of the action is not indicated, we are free to select any subject as a performer, provided that the subject is capable of performing the verb. In this case, the city and the mayor. Now let us move on with perfect tenses. Look at these examples. The relocation project has been supported by NGCP. Families had been transferred to a more secured environment. Both sentences are in the perfect tenses and are in the passive voice. To transform them, select a subject which is normally in the by phrase. In the absence of the by phrase, you have the chance to choose. Take note that this will serve as the performer of the action. For the verb, it will be easy because it will only be composed of has or have for present perfect and had for past perfect plus the past participle of the verb. In the example, Sentence one is in the present perfect tense, and sentence two in the past perfect tense. To transform them, the sentences become, NGCP has supported the relocation project. The city had transferred families to a more secured environment. Now it's time for you to do this. Transform the sentence in perfect tenses to active voice. Again, you are given one minute to think. Electricity and water supplies have been provided for the families. The project had been done for three times by our local government. Time is up. The answers are the project has provided electricity and water supply for the families. Our local government had done the project for three times. The verbs may also be in progressive form. Take a look at these sentences. Loud sounds during class hours are being discouraged by the city government. The use of video game was being prohibited by the ordinance. Notice the verbs in ing form, which are also in the passive voice. Let us now transform them to active voice. If we will recall the rules, the object in the by phrase becomes the subject while the verb needs to change with only the auxiliary verbs is, are, was, where, plus the verb in ing form. Sentences in the active voice become like this. The city government is discouraging loud sounds during class hours.
the ordinance was prohibiting the use of video game. Now it's time for you to do this task. You have one minute to think about your answer. Transform the following sentences from passive to active voice. The rule is being created to help students. The ordinance was being appreciated by Valenzuelanos. Time is up. Here are the sentences when transformed in the active voice. The government is creating the rule to help students. Valenzuelanos were appreciating the ordinance. Great job, learners. You have already mastered the voice of the verb, the active and the passive voice. But wait. There's more. I wonder if you are also familiar with the following verbs. Going to, infinitive, modal verbs, and modal perfect. Oftentimes, we use them when we construct sentences. For example, in the active voice, Marlon is going to receive a scholarship. We follow the same rule in selecting the subject and object, but the verb is different. For constructions like this in the passive voice, we say a scholarship is going to be received by Marlon. An infinitive is a verbal that contains the prepositions to or the preposition to, to sing, to dance, to watch, to like, to drive, etc. In this sentence, Marlon has to receive a scholarship. There is an infinitive, to receive. To transform that into passive, we say a scholarship has to be received by Marlon. On the other hand, modal verbs are verbs like may, will, shall, should, would, might, could, etc. When they are used in the active voice, for example, in this sentence, Marlon should receive a scholarship. The sentence in passive voice becomes a scholarship should be received by Marlon. Modal verbs may also be in perfect tense like in this example. Marlon should have received a scholarship. And to transform this kind of example, we say a scholarship should have been received by Marlon. Let us take the following sentences. Your challenge is to transform them from active to passive voice. The city is going to transfer the family in the relocation site. 30 seconds to answer. Here is the answer. The family is going to be transferred in the relocation site by the city.
she needs to study the lesson. You have 30 seconds to transform the sentence. Time is up. The answer is the lesson needs to be studied by her. Valenzuelanos should follow the ordinance. You have 30 seconds to think about your answer. Time is up. In passive voice, the sentence is, the ordinance should be followed by Valenzuelanos. The council should have passed the rule. 30 seconds again to think about your answer. Time is up. In passive voice, the sentence is, the rule should have been passed by the council. My dear virtual learners, the term voice is the term used to describe whether a verb is active or passive. Once you have mastered the rules in transforming, it will just be like a piece of cake for you. It only takes practice and motivation to be a master at it. This time, the next two minutes is allotted for you to ask questions you have in mind. It's time to comment your questions, which you will answer when the music stops.
our moderator has already generated questions from the comment section of this live stream. Now it's time to answer some of your questions. The first question comes from Lawang Bato National High School. Which voice should we use in writing? Well, both can be applicable, but you have to be consistent with the voice that you use. Develop a bias for active sentences over passive sentences because active sentences are shorter, more direct, more informative, more authoritative, and easier to absorb. Do not be afraid about using active sentences, though because passive sentences are also useful for avoiding blame, portraying a neutral tone, and focusing on the recipient of the action of a verb rather than the doer. Thank you very much for that question. Let's now go to Facebook question number two. This one comes from Veinte Reales National High School. And the question is, when can we use the active and the passive voice? Use the active voice when when you want sentences to flow better and easier to understand, when you want to control your writing to make the reader trust what you are saying, when you want your sentence to be shorter and sharper, and when you want to create a clear image in the reader's mind of who is doing what. Use the passive voice when the action is more important than the doer. When to keep the subject and focus on consistency throughout the passage. When to be tactful by not naming the doer. When to describe a condition in which the doer is unknown or unimportant. When to create an authoritative tone. Thank you very much for that question. Now let's go to Facebook question number three comes from Lawang Bato National High School again. What kind of verbs can be used in transforming voices of verbs? I keep mentioning the sentence pattern. In identifying the voice of the verb, your knowledge of the pattern will help. Only transitive verbs or those that take objects can be transformed into passive constructions. Furthermore, active sentences containing certain verbs cannot be transformed into passive structures. Thank you for all your questions. Congratulations for making it today. It has been a very fruitful discussion and I hope that you will still be with us, your virtual teachers, on our next episodes. Take note that in the English language, your sentences will form what is either called passive voice or active voice. The primary difference between the two is the word order, which makes the subject of the sentence either actively performing the verb or inaccurately presents the subject as a direct object. Whether the voice is passive or active will wholly depend on the relationship between the subject of the sentence and the verb used. This has been your teacher, Sir Gilbert Serrano Ramos. Stay safe, enjoy learning online because hashtag learning never stops. See you again next time. Have a great day.